One time when my kids were younger, my daughter came to one of my classes and she heard me speak and at the end of the class she told me, why do you always make your students so scared? Why do you need to fear all classes? And I told them that's our business, we are selling FUD. Fear, uncertainty and doubt. <laughs> and if we didn't do it, I don't know what we'll be living from. So uh, thank you very many for fighting us. <laughs> uh, that will be a responsibility for that. And now uh, my dear friend, uh, Dr. Shlomit Wagman, who is the former chair of the Israeli Anti-Money Laundering Authority and also the Israeli Privacy Authority, a Harvard University fellow, who talked to us a little bit about cybersecurity and cryptocurrency in cyber crisis. Shlomit. Hello, good afternoon. Thank you so much, Nimrod and Manny, for the invitation, and uh, Gilly and the entire team for making this amazing week happen. So I'm going to speak with you a little bit about uh, the law enforcement authorities' uh, perspective and speak a little bit about ransomware as a financial crime and what happens actually in this environment and how it can also be used uh, to some extent by private sector when trying to work um, and understand what happened with the cybercrime or crisis management. So let's just have a very, very brief history of financial crime. What criminal are doing? How did they reach to this uh, point? So I think that the first major financial case was El Capone, the tax evasion offenses. This is how it all started. When law enforcement realized that they should actually chase after the money in order to solve cases. Then we saw, you know, ransom, the, the um, traditional way, you know, when they usually uh, actually took people, hosted and asked cash for them. And then we developed more to breaking beds. You see here, like this is from the Netflix movie. Cash, cash is running the world and there is so much cash there that they could, were not able to even launder that. But then criminals became more sophisticated and we've seen that in Ozark and later on in Good Wives uh, on actually building structures and complicated structures in order to steal money and hide the funds. But then something new came into the world, virtual currencies. And here, what we basically see, actually, I really like the poster here at the left. This is Al-Qaeda uh, in the hill when they're doing the executions. They actually put a poster and ask for donations in crypto. So we see a lot of work of cryptocurrencies and terrorist financing, which is extremely challenging for law enforcement authorities because all of a sudden, the, you know, it's very hard to trace those funds. We've seen also assassination. This is um, uh, former Secretary Bolton of the U.S. Department of Justice, uh, which was, um, uh, there was an attempt to assassinate team uh, playing uh, with crypto and NFTs and mixers, tornado cash, and, and so many challenges. And on top of that, we have the ransomware and crypto. Now, if in the past people use robbers actually had to go to the bank and rob the bank and get the money, they don't need to do that anymore. <laughs> and we see how ransomware became a, ransomware as a service. This became a business for criminals. It's much better, cheaper, easier to just get funds that way. Why? Uh, and the way that uh, ransomware is being paid most of the time is with cryptocurrencies, mostly Bitcoin, but not only, because it has some anonymity um, characteristics, it has no borders, it's very easy uh, to work with that, uh, no regulated intermediaries, limited capabilities uh, of law enforcement authorities, expertise too, and it seems for some time to be like the perfect crime scene in which you can actually rob someone and take the money and run away without being caught. So, what can be done? Apparently, a lot. So at the law enforcement community, we were trying to mitigate the risks. And surprisingly, there are quite a few solutions to do that with cryptocurrencies. We are doing a lot of regulation, technology, and global collaboration. And I'll try to give you a couple of stories and hit to see how we do that. We are using financial intelligence. Here, what you see, by the way, this is a real map, a map that was prepared by the Israeli law enforcement uh, community and actually reflect financial um, uh, uh, connections between parts. And this is a terrorism financing scheme in the same, which was uh, the basis for designation of 21 uh, terror organizations based on financial intelligence. Now, 
if we can actually use financial intelligence to uh, catch criminals, perhaps we could do that with ransomware as well and cryptocurrencies. So financial intelligence is a very powerful tool because every transaction leaves traces and if you have the tools, capabilities and understanding to trace that, you can actually make miracles. You could really reach to the point in which you are able to find those criminals. So the global community basically put a framework to work with a financial system to be able to trace financial crimes. It put a lot of efforts on private sector that need to report suspicious transaction reports. Uh, it uh, forces all countries to, to impose the exact same policy in their countries in order to make sure that they have the relevant tools to do that. Uh, law enforcement authorities need to develop tools, expertise, um, and, and do whatever is needed to do that. And there is an ongoing monitoring about those countries to make sure that they are doing that. In that way, we're actually able, generally speaking, to make a, a real difference. We're able to uh, confiscate billions of dollars from criminals in Israel. We crack down major organization, criminal organization and much more. So what did we do with cryptocurrencies? We've just decided to apply the same anti-money laundering and counter-terrorism financing regime to this space and to work with that also uh, with respect to ransomware. So already in 2018, the international community decided to impose all those rules on cryptocurrencies. And basically it means that cryptocurrencies are being treated like every other financial mean. Namely, we were trying to look for the relevant financial intermediaries that will be responsible to look uh, after the environment and make uh, reports to the uh, authorities uh, when something suspicious is happening. And soon you'll see how it all connects to ransomware attack and crisis management. Uh, we've defined uh, VASP, Virtual Asset Service Providers. Basically, those are the exchange platforms uh, that uh, you are all being used, uh, using if you're using a crypto, like uh, Coinbase, Binance, and uh, many others. And we impose on them the exact same rules and regulation as in traditional financing, namely they need to identify the customer, they need to collect some information and so forth. And most importantly, we realized that we could actually use the blockchain, the technology that collects everything in a transparent way to trace financial crimes and actually use that in order to detect crimes. And what you see here, it's a real map that my uh, unit, uh, uh, the anti-money laundering unit prepared, which actually reflects how we combine blockchain analytics, which is an open source information which is available online, together with the KYC, Know Your Customer Information. The yellow dots here are actually the um, cash in and cash out point in which the criminals we're actually trying to get out the money. So we were able to identify them, chase them, and actually take the money. Uh, we've been using those cases in those techniques in many cases, the US government, all of the governments. Here you see a very nice case in which Israel designated Hamas platforms um, and detect donation. As a result, by the way, Hamas stopped uh, collecting donations via, via crypto because uh, the people that donated to that immediately were um, considered as suspected uh, entities and were not able to work anymore in the financial environment. So we see how powerful it is. And now we get into the ransomware, how it all connects. This is a real case in which my authority in Israel was able to identify in a national, in a national um, um, a ransomware attack that the funds that were transmitted with, uh, via uh, blockchain with Bitcoin were actually cashed out in a money exchange platform in Tehran, Iran. That made us realize immediately that the attack is not just a criminal one, <clears throat> but has, has other motives. And once you know that, and that was in the first negotiation when we just started to transfer the uh, very small friction of Bitcoin just to make sure that the hackers are serious and that they have the data, so we were able to change the mind shift and understand what's going on there. So what we're now doing, the international community, is mapping the relevant financial flow of ransomware. We see that we have financial institutions that victims are using them to transmit the funds, usually to virtual asset providers, the crypto so, um, uh, the crypto shops. Uh, we have the virtual asset service providers that actually see their clients coming over and ask to buy crypto very quickly in order to pay the ransomware. We see insurance companies and incident response companies that are helping those customers, those clients uh, to actually solve the problems and the uh, cybersecurity companies. 
What we are trying to focus on is the layering part where hackers are actually trying when they're taking uh, the ransomware, here you can see the peel of chain, they will not cash out everything immediately. They will go, they will do layering in order to hide the funds and to be able to use them. What can be done also by private sector is to conduct some blockchain analytics in order to actually see and trace those activities and be able to understand who are the attackers and sometimes even recover for the funds. So like in 30 minutes, just to conclude, a couple of price management uh, or advice to private sector. First, the official um, 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 position of the government is to do not pay. But if you are paying, um, it, it is important to make sure to avoid sanction. You are not paying to Mother Teresa. Obviously, you are paying to criminals. Just make sure that you are not paying to um, sanction uh, entities. Also, try to use the uh, blockchain analytics to know your attacker. Many times, by doing this exercise, you could get a lot of information about that. And um, uh, also, don't forget about the reporting uh, obligations, including to the data and privacy protection authorities, securities, police, and uh, anti-money laundering authorities. Um, there is still a long way to go ahead, but that uh, will do another time, and uh, also keep developing the framework. Thank you so much, and uh, thanks.